Hello chess friends and welcome to your side of chess channel and welcome to a beautiful gameplay by the latest version of Stockfish, the powerful Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine, Kaisa, in a beautiful bot 20 cards variation of the Kadokan defense. And this game shows, I think, a very important rule in attacking chess, which says that sometimes when there's simply no improvement for your pieces, where there's simply no pawn movement also, then it's probably time to strike with some tactics because in some position there's simply no further room for improvement. There, you cannot improve your minor pieces further, you cannot even push pawns because the position is so static. So probably then we should search for tactics to maybe even sacrifice something to, to let the pawns roll to maybe uh, somehow create new dynamic opportunities. So I think the Stockfish engine is the beast when it comes to creating really unbalanced position out of static uh, out of static positional setup so in my opinion really beautiful game and I think uh, here it's very important for us to follow the Kadokan defense because also the Kadokan defense I think is really one of the most popular openings now these days especially because it can be played in any level of chess you can play it as a beginner as an intermediate player uh, top GMs are using the Kadokan de defense very often even the strongest player in the world Magnus Carlsen sometimes in classical chess plays the Kadokan defense so in my opinion really important important but also beautiful game here played by Stoffer 16 against Kaisa. So let's see now what happened with the white pieces. The fish opened with move e4. We have c6 by Kaisa, the Kadokan d4, d5 and now we have the advanced variation with move e5. Now comes the Bosphony cards variation uh, hitting the center immediately with the move c5. We have knight to f3, c takes d, knight takes d, knight to c6 hitting the pawn and now bishop to b5 temporarily pinning now the knight on c6, bishop to d7 uh, protecting the knight and now knight takes c6 forces now here the structure c6 d5 by by black and what black is uh trying to do is of course to fix the structure with move e6 and then to make something out of this uh, central control this c4 c pawn and d pawn are of course very mobile very flexible pawns which can of course create damage in white's position now in the later state of the game so so far i think a decent decent continuation also for kaisa of course the good side for white is this powerful bishop on d3 the downside for black in this particular setup is of course the bad bishop that's temporarily blocked out in some lines after move e6 it's simply bad it's simply paralyzed by its own pawn so here you see e6 is the preparation of of course to play the move c5 but the bishop is of course not in optimal shape the bishop is now blocked out by its own pawn structure we have kingside casting knight to e7 preparing knight to g6 or knight to f5 knight to d2 normal development and now a5 as promised kaisa is trying here c5 c4 maybe to make something here on the queen side with a4 rook to bx is of course also very interesting so basically black should coordinate the attack towards the queen side here in my opinion this is the way to go after move a5 we have queen to g4 now comes this idea c5 we have c3 controlling the d4 square and now knight to f5 fixing simply the position here on the king side and of course also liberating now uh, some spaces for the dark square bishop what you should not do, in my opinion, here for White's perspective, is to pick up the piece on f5, because although uh, here after e takes f5, you have created now a double pawn structure. Actually, I think after something like queen to f3 and bishop to e6, black can have really a solid position. Okay, this is maybe not the optimal piece, as we said. It is uh, playing a very very important defensive role in front of black in front of black's king but uh, it's of course not the optimal bishop that you want to have but i think with this setup the pawns are very very aggressive here the pawns are very strong here so as i said the bishop will find finally come into the game the rook will come into the game the queen can be also improved so in my opinion black should be even uh completely fine here in my opinion i would love now to play here this game from black's perspective so here after knight to f5 that's why knight to f3 play by fish we have h5 uh, queen to f four we have now the move g6 building this beautiful fortress on oh, ice course building this compact setup now this knight is very very cemented very powerful here on f5 and as we mentioned you don't want to give up of course your powerful bishop on d3 for this knight on f5 we have h4 uh, by stockfish stockfish uh, is not allowing some advancement me here on uh, the king side by black we have uh, knight to h6 and now we have a rook to b8 bishop to g7 rook to e1 controlling now the e5 square the e5 pawn the e5 pawn uh, is now the most important strategic element for white because it gives us space and uh, you see uh, the only advantage that i see now in white's position is this space advantage with the movie e5 so that's why 
when you have this space advantage on the king side like this then of course that's the area that we're trying to attack so Stockfish is now coordinating uh, the attack towards the king side on the other hand as we as we mentioned in the beginning black is attacking the queen side with here c4 d4 maybe a4 a3 similar stuff so after move rook to e1 we have queen to c7 queen to g3 knight to g4 bishop to f4 controlling the space advantage on e5 king side casting bishop to c2 and now as promised black continues now the pressure here on uh on the queen side with move a4 knight to g5 very very tricky move in some lines if possible if necessary maybe there are some tactical opportunities not immediately of course but this is really an unpleasant knight to handle because when you play sometimes chess you're not liking of course that your opponent's pieces are on your side of the board although it's not doing so much now in the beginning but we feel sometimes really pressure we feel sometimes really unpleasant with uh, such a piece on our side of the board so really really good move here by stock for 16. knight to h6 we have a rook to d1 c4 a3 gives of course here uh in some lines if rook to b8 happens if you're trying maybe to attack the b2 pawn then there is still this uh good defensive idea with bishop to c1 and then uh the bishop is controlling the square b2 keeps of course also the attack here on the king side and what the most important thing is that you have already played the move rook to d1 and you not lose your rook connection so that's why very very nice move here by uh, stockfish 16 first rook to d1 now after move c4 a3 and as i said if necessary we retreat with our bishop here on c1 we stay active but have also a beautiful beautiful activity on the d and e file with both of our powerful rooks after move a3 knight to g4 we have rook to d2 knight to h6 and now after move knight to f6 now comes uh, uh, the critical moment because here Kaisa tried rook from a to b8 hitting now the pawn on b2 and now comes this rule that we have talked about in the beginning basically the only piece that can i think be improved is maybe here the knight on g5 again but the knight was on g5 anyway so we don't want to play of course knight to g5 knight to f3 knight to g5 knight to f3 maybe there is also an opportunity to include the rook into the game but in order to make this rooks active you have to open some files and the only files that you can open with the white pieces are somehow how maybe to push the pawn on g4 f4 f5 but black has a great control of this f5 square it has greater control of the g4 square and stockfish finds here really brilliant plan how to open the position and how to spice up the game because as i said there's simply no further improvement of the pawns and there's simply no further improvement of our minor pieces so that's why there is this rule that says when there's simply no rule for improvement in of any pieces probably your next move should be really, really a beautiful tactical shot and here stockfish does it first of all bishop to h6 gets rid of this um, annoying knight the knight was very very important in this defensive structure that black built in the beginning as we said this was the solid structure knight to g4 knight to f5 you saw uh the knight controlled the the the, the, the attack by white played really good as i said defense role now from bishop to h6 and bishop takes h6 stoffers plays now the brilliant bishop takes g6 and that's the only way how you can open the position no other possibilities are there look at this what should we do here the continuation f takes g6 rook queen takes g6 you have to now cover with the bishop and now knight to g5 is threatening immediately the checkmate on h7 here we have rook to f5 by uh the kaisa engine and again you could maybe try here queen to h7 maybe also after king to f8 pick up the pawn but maybe after bishop to e5 rook to e5 black can hang on to this position although even in this scenario white should be much much better because of the endangered king position now the king is naked here on f8 but stockfish after move rook to f5 played the most aggressive line rook to e3 this is the way to go keeping the options of course rook to g3 is now the threat and continue the pressure here with the queen and rook battery on the g file here what you could do maybe from black's perspective is this line h takes g5 uh rook takes g5 but now after h takes g5 notice still although you got rid of this power for knight on g5 still you have many many problems e6 is weak uh we're protecting the pawn on b2 rook will come on f3 pawn on h5 is weak will advance the pawn to g6 then afterwards so 
many many tactical opportunities i would not love to play them as i said this game from black's perspective even if you try here bishop to e8 maybe to hit the queen and include the bishop into the game then as we said the e6 pawn is weak so in my opinion this would be a one-way ticket in white favor not working here so i have to move rook to e3 you see you cannot get rid i think of this powerful knight on g5 we have bishop to c8 by uh, the kaisa engine rook to f3 interesting choice by uh, stockfish but stockfish is of course trying to somehow um lock the f5 for the queen uh, for the king because then after queen to h7 it would be a beautiful beautiful checkmate the king could not escape here on uh, on f7 so that's why rook to f3 we have uh, g takes f3 very nice uh, move here by stockfish seems strange that you're taking wild with the pawn but actually what stockfish is trying to do is of course to keep the knight here on this powerful square and what stockfish is now further trying to do is to play rook to d uh, four and then rook to f4 controlling again the escape route for the king on the f file and then to deliver checkmate on h7 we have rook to b7 kaisa is desperately trying now to bring more pieces into the defense we have now king to g2 and now queen to e5 this move seems strange because it allows your queen to e8 but what should you do after king to g2 you could of course try maybe queen to e7 keeping your defensive options keeping your pieces close to the king but as we said rook to d4 is now the main threat rook to f4 and then queen to h7 let's see you try maybe bishop to d7 now we play rook to f4 bishop to e8 for instance leads into immediate checkmate again you cannot even play queen to f8 you cannot include the queen into defense because it's immediate checkmate so no pieces can be, can be included into the defense because they are um, they're um, not allowing here the king to escape they're uh, blocking out the potential escape route for the king that's not the most important thing here to know this really really beautiful pattern that stockfish recognized so that's why after moving to g2 uh, the uh, kaisa engine took now the pawn on e5 but it allows now here this tactical sequence in which stockfish gets the piece back has now the better activity has now of course uh the more secure king has now also a better structure although this is a double pawn structure but this f3 f2 structure is actually protecting white king because no good checks are possible here for um, um for black even if you in some wild lines play something like i don't know bishop to d6 and then maybe you deliver some checks still we can always use maybe this route and escape with our king on e2 this is an optimal just scenario for black but even in that scenario i think white can get out of this tactical mess so as i said black and red not really endanger white king because of this beautiful pawn structure uh, in front of the king so after move uh, queen to c8 we have rook to g7 queen to d8 connecting the queen to the knight probably because of this tactics you see rook to g5 queen to g5 check and then the rook is heavy so rook to e7 rook to d4 again with the same idea to create the rook lift maybe then later somehow again include the queen into the attack rook to g7 rook to d1 queen to e2 and now uh, rook to g1 we have queen to e5 if you take now the pawn on b2 seems tempting but it's a little bit too slow because uh, your e6 then is weak maybe you can, can again take out now this one but now after queen to e6 you're running into uh brutal brutal tactical sequences especially because we'll also include the rook into the game in some lines you can get even checkmated so after move rook to g1 we have queen to e5 queen to e8 queen to f5 and now rook to e1 hitting the pawn on e6 that's now the main target of stockfish here the backward pawn on e6 we have rook to e7 queen to a8 and now after queen to g6 stockfish took now this pawn really interesting choice i wasn't really sure why stockfish did that because stockfish had i think a great activity here on the king side but actually this makes perfect sense because we have created a passer on the a file in some lines maybe if this game reaches the fully end game stage of course the a pawn will 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 march and of course will be promoted to queen in a potential end game then white should be again much much better so basically stockfish can secure the game in a tactical way but also in a more deeper strategic way in a potential end game still this is of course winning for white bishop to h6 rook to e5 bishop to g7 uh, rook to e3 bishop to f6 and now uh, supporting this powerful knight on g5 we have king to g7 queen to d1 a uh, king to h6 and now after queen to e2 in this particular position the, the kaisa engine resigned again you could maybe trade off here the bishop for this powerful knight but then we'll 
uh, improve our structure. The e6 pawn is still weak. We can let this pawn roll. The king is endangered. Too many, too many elements in white's favor, in my opinion. Completely, completely winning endgame here for white. So as I said, in this particular position, the Kaisa engine resigned. The evaluation is plus five here in white's favor. So it's, I think, a decent choice here to resign the game. Beautiful, beautiful attack by Stoffer 16 in the Karokan defense. Really, really interesting ideas. Um, out of this seemingly static position, Stockfish creates really an epic dynamic position with this beautiful peace sacrifice on G6. This is the way to go. But I think this is a must no rule uh, when it comes to attacking chess. There are some positions, it's when, uh, as I said, in which we cannot improve any pieces. We cannot play with our pawns then probably as i said it's time to strike with some tactics uh maybe there are some positions in which we cannot do it probably then it's a two blocked out position it's a two draw position but i think this is a perfect example how to create dynamics out of seemingly static positions really really wild stuff so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game if you want to see more epic spectacular beautiful attacking games like this check out our comments and chess games played by computer series here's the link of our playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel See you soon with some more videos and what do we say? Chess is the best of course.